I think we struggled everywhere today. As I told the team, I think we're at a crossroads and kind of how we you know, want to want to continue down this season. I think it's a critical time for us. This one's done. It stings. It hurts. We're all disappointed. We're all frustrated, mad, angry. Uh, have to be able to get over it and get ready to go in the next one. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by Shift 4. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Glad you're with us on what is kind of an unusual week because for the first time in 52 weeks, the Tennessee Titans are getting ready to see the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's hard to believe it's been that long. We're going to jump into a very extended know your foe momentarily. But Mike, as the team gets back on the practice field tomorrow, is the message to them similar to what it was after Buffalo about just getting back to your roots and doing what you do? Yeah, we talked two weeks ago about um, this being the new season. This, this was the NFL season has just uh, begun because we wanted to make this push. We wanted to try to find a team and be, our, be the team that's going to play uh, its best football late uh, and, and get into the tournament. And so um, just like the beginning of the season, we started 0-2. Uh, we've started – you know, 0-2 in this, this late season here. So we're going to have to find a way to, to get back, um, to, to make some plays, to complement each other, to do all these things that, uh, that we did to, to put ourselves in this position. Jacksonville is a big one because it's an AFC South matchup. You'll see them again in Week 18. Let's take a look at Know Your Foe now as we jump right into the week of the Jags. The Titans have been division rivals with this club for 30 years, ever since Jacksonville came into the AFC Central in 1995. They fall yesterday 40-14 to at Detroit, 4-8 and on the season. Doug Peterson is the coach there now, formerly of Philadelphia. What are some of the characteristics of a Doug Peterson team? Well, first I would say 4-8, and eight, but six of those losses have been by one possession. So they, they've been in uh, almost every game. Um, you know, you can't count on what happened yesterday. Uh, but, you know, with Doug, I think it's, uh, you know, it seems like it's a, it's a free-spirited group. Uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's an offense that has a lot of speed. It has uh, motions and shifts and plays that get on the perimeter with an athletic quarterback. Uh, they will mix in some, some tempo uh, defensively. You know, we'll talk about them here in a little bit, but multiple schemes with uh, Blueprint from Tampa Bay where Coach Caldwell uh, spent a lot of time. So a uh, very good punt and kick returner, a lot, a lot of speed on this football team. And, you know, they, um, you know, we'll have to be ready for a lot of game plan situations, short yardage, you know, third down, you know, thing, things that make you think and, and, and make sure you're, you're, you're paying attention. Where has second-year quarterback Trevor Lawrence improved the most since you last saw him? Well, it seems to be like there's uh, some decisiveness uh, from the pocket. Uh, they are building some plays in that, that get him out in the pocket, but you know, still working his own read stuff. And so, if you don't pay attention, you know, he can pull it. Uh, that's not what they want to major in, but you can see the decisiveness there, throwing the ball in the middle of the field, uh, trusting what he sees, and then if it's not there, being able to take off and and extend plays. And um, you know, I don't know if he was doing a great job of taking care of himself uh, this year. He's trying to be conscious of you know, taking care of himself and, and, and when he's time to run and, you know, being able to get down. And, but I think that there's been a decisiveness uh, to, to anticipate throws uh, a little better. Christian Kirk was a big-name free agent signing at wide receiver. What has he added to the Jacksonville wideout core that you can already see? Well, he can play outside, he can play inside, vertical threat, uh, good route craft. Um, you know, here you're going to see him working across the field. And, uh, you know, creating separation, uh, you know, heavily targeted. I think he's got 99 targets on the season. 
so quarterbacks usually throw to the guy that's open, and uh, he, he's leading that group there. And a running back who last year was injured, this year has come back. Travis Etienne, explosive. Speed. Yeah. Speed. One, one of the faster backs in the league. Runs hard. Uh, this isn't just a, a small sub back. This You can see him falling forward. Uh, as a team, they average 4.9 a, a carry. You know, he averages 5.4 a, a rush. So, uh, you know, it, we're still going to have to make sure that, that we tackle him and that we, you know, have some hats at the football uh, because he's got speed and can run and he can make the first guy miss. It just, you know, he's had two fumbles on the season. You see this one here, which really turned the, to the game to Detroit. You know, things started really going their way after the turnover. All right, let's talk about Jacksonville's defense. They have invested a lot of high draft picks on defense. Young, athletic. Tell me about them as a unit, and who do you like on that unit the most? Well, I, I think some of the underrated guys first that, that are really playing well in there is, is Hamilton at the, at the nose. He's a tough run defender. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the length and the, the athleticism on the edge uh, with, with you know, Walker uh, and Allen, uh, Key comes in. And, you know, they got young linebackers that, that can run. You know, they've had a couple injuries in the secondary, uh, but obviously, you know, Campbell, he's got long, you know, he's fast, everything that uh, you would want in a corner. Uh, and just making sure now that, that we're taking care of these guys and covering them up, but they don't lack for speed, uh, certainly. I was talking with Frank Frangie, the voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars yesterday. He said they're still kind of figuring it out on defense, where everything goes together. They feel like when they do, they're going to have a chance to be special. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. It, it looks like the, there's multiple schemes that, that they're trying to implement. Um, and again, young linebackers uh, are going to be there to make plays and, and have uh, impactful plays. Uh, and then maybe sometimes... Uh, they, 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 like all young linebackers, get, get confused. And, but I think that the structure's there, the, the talent is there, and it'll be a great challenge like it is always. So is this, because you haven't seen him in so long, is this almost like seeing one of those opponents that you only see every two or four years in terms of the prep that begins this week? Well, we'll always try to have that prep, and there'll be some familiarity uh, with, with who they are. But... You know, we haven't seen Kirk. Uh, Zay Jones wasn't with them last year. Uh, some of the offensive linemen are, are going to be carried over. Um, some of the defensive linemen, some of the edge players, but then they do have uh, new players and new schemes. So every week is a challenge to figure out you know, what we're going to do and who we're going to do it against. Is it better to go against a division opponent after a couple of disappointing losses? Well, I don't know that. I just know that it's important. Every, every game is important, but certainly the ones in the division at home you know, are critical that uh, that you do everything you can to, to win the football game. Be 4-0 in the division with a win. That would be fantastic. That would Mike. be fantastic indeed. Mike Vrabel talking about Jacksonville. We've got a lot more to talk about on this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show coming up, including a genuine Titan, a guy on defense who wasn't here at the start of the year, and it's hard to imagine where the Titans would be without him right now. That's coming up as you're on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Time now to introduce you to our Wesley Mortgage community hero, and this is a special one. His name is Jim Daigle. He was actually stationed at Fort Campbell three times. He was in combat multiple times, wounded twice in combat. Now medically retired, he has done something very special post-retirement, and that's start a JROTC program for youngsters in this area. The Wesley Mortgage Community hero, Jim Daigle, who tells us that making a difference was something that he always knew he would do everywhere. I am writing to tell you about my husband, Jim, who is not only my personal hero, but a true American hero. After 9-11, Jim's son, Alan, a U.S. Marine, was wounded in Iraq. Jim knew then that he wanted to do something more for his country. What is all this? The Titans, they had a contest, Wesley Mortgage Community Hero, and I entered my letter 
At the age of 40, that part's true. He joined the Army to become a combat medic. He was with his unit, 1st Battalion, 506th Infantry, when an IED exploded and he was seriously injured. He was awarded the Purple Heart Medal. Two years later, he returned to Afghanistan where he was shot in the leg and was awarded his second Purple Heart. He has also received Bronze Star with Valor, Legion of Merit, Combat Medic Badge, Air Assault Wings, and other awards. Jim loved being a soldier, that, that is true. But he was forced to medically retire in 2019 due to combat-related injuries. Currently, he is a JROTC instructor and head baseball coach at Todd County Central High School. Sergeant Deagle, he's done a lot for me. He's taught me a lot, really. He taught me to be a better leader. I have really bad anxiety. He helped me through my anxiety. He also inspired other cadets to be a better person. Well, he's taught me a lot more about self-confidence. He really helped me to strive for success. Congratulations, Sergeant D. Hope the best for you. Congratulations, Sergeant D. Hey, Jim. This is your buddy, Peter. I love you, man. And I just want to say congratulations and also thank you for serving our country. God bless you, man. He has sacrificed so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's a community hero. Yeah, all I needed to see were the way that those kids talked about Sergeant D. And right. The impact that he's already made on them. That's, that's all I needed to that's see. That's like coaching. It's absolutely, he's doing more than coaching. Yeah, and he's from Houston, and he's a big Titans fan. Congratulations, Sergeant D. Sergeant D. And thanks to our friends at Wesley Mortgage for making this great feature possible that we could share with you tonight. More coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, next. Epic Western gives us a chance to introduce you to a genuine Titan every single week on the Mike Vrabel Show. And this week, we're going to make sure you know who Andrew Adams is. I have to tell you, when the Titans signed him off Pittsburgh's practice squad, I had no idea who he was. But number 47 has become a big part of this defense, a regular starter and a guy who's made plays, especially in the Indianapolis game where he returned an interception 76 yards for a touchdown. But in terms of making the big hit or being in the right spot or taking on the biggest runners or receivers, this guy never backs down. Our Amy Wells had a chance to sit down with Andrew Adams and introduces us to this genuine Titan. Andrew, it seems like when you look at your family tree, you've got NFL just running through your veins. How many people in your family have played for the National Football League? Yeah, there's definitely been a few. So we have my brother-in-law, uh, most recent Alec Ogletree, he played linebacker. Um, we have Sam Adams, he played uh, D-tackle for a while. And my uncle, uh, his name was Sam Adams as well. Uh, and then I have Matt Forte, who's my cousin as well. Um, so yeah, the, the, the tree has a lot of branches and uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely fun to be a part of. I mean, at this point, it's kind of the family business, right? <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. Uh, I don't want to put any pressure, you know, on my newborn son. So I don't want to say it's a family business, but it, def it definitely runs in the family. Now, how old's your son? He's three months. That's very exciting. Very Congratulations. Exciting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate um, it. How has fatherhood changed your, your perception on what you do and the not official family business. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's changed it a lot, actually. I feel like um, this is the first year where I feel like, a, I don't want to say a grown up with the job. Uh, I feel almost before that football was something I loved to do and I didn't look at it as you know a job almost. I feel like I had the privilege to keep playing um, at the highest level. But now it's almost like you're going to work, providing for your family, even though you, you still love the game, but it's kind of, more of that mindset. As a role model, what is it most important for you to model to the guys that are around? Just that, you know, this is serious. You know, like like, like we were talking earlier, I feed my family this way. So, you know, I, uh, you know, prepare, you know, day in, day out, at night, throughout the day. So if you want to be, you know, uh, not just a good player in this league, a great player in this league, you're going to have to take that approach that, you know, it's not just you know, punch the clock when you're here. It's, you know, this is a full season, six month thing. You have to be locked in, you know, in the off season, then, then you can relax. But now's not the time to relax. 
You've talked a lot about the culture here at the Tennessee Titans. What is it about the culture of this team, this group of guys that you like so much? You know, it's just that family. I think, you know, we, we preach on that. And other teams do, you know, family environment, but it's just, I don't know, it's real life here almost. Um, just the way the coaches, the head coach, Coach Vrabel communicates with his players, you know, the team meetings, he's calling people by his name, I mean, by their first name. I mean, you don't really see that in too many other places. So uh, it truly is, you know, that family environment and you can feel, you know, the aura and the building, you know, and it's great. What's left for you to accomplish in your career? I would say just keep growing as a player every day. Um, I don't want to put, there's definitely not a ceiling on how good I can be. I know I'm in my seventh year and I still think that I'm getting better. Um, so I just want to keep having that daily approach mindset to show up to work and get better. And I know, um, you know, at the end of my career, I can look back and I won't regret, you know, not going as hard as I could or not being as good as I wanted to be if I take that daily approach of getting better, getting better, getting better. Good stuff, Amy Wells, with Andrew Adams. Every once in a while, you find that guy who's a perfect fit. Feels like he's been here forever. Now. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It's uh, It kind of has. It's September 21st. But, um, <laughs> You know, he's played a lot of football. He's, he's a smart player who I think, to, to like he said, has gotten better in our system and, you know, made some plays for us, made some really big plays, started off on special teams, and now has, you know, gotten a larger role defensively. He's come up with some huge plays and um, is a great teammate. Enjoy having him around. Uh, I mean, we, we could use some of those uh, – those bloodlines that he's got. Yeah, uh, for you know, real. I know some really great players. Yes. <laughs> Big shoes to feel, Andrew. The Sam Adams, yeah. too, from the Patriots back in the day, and then the other one from the uh, Raven. Right. It, uh, Matt Forte. Not bad. No. He can and, catch. But he's uh, he's done a nice job. And so we just need to continue, uh, like he said, improving, taking that daily approach. And, 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 and it's funny, he's – in his seventh year, he's like, now I have a job. And, you know, he's always had a job. Now he's just got a, a little baby. Baby will do that. When we come back, we've got Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success against Jacksonville. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Back in the Bet MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. Time for the Nissan Keys to Success in game one against Jacksonville. This is probably your biggest challenge so far this year in terms of covering kicks, right? Right. I mean, this is a dual threat uh, returner you know, that they have. Jamal Agnew, it, it seems like he takes one back 100 yards or takes a punt back every season, makes a uh, game-changing play. Uh, we're we're going to have to punt better. We're going to have to not only punt better, but we're going to have to cover better on those punts. Too many yards in the punt return game to change field position. Uh, and, but we have to keep covering kickoffs, and everybody's at the point of attack. Uh, he's a strong runner. He's got great vision, and he's fast. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things there that we'll have to focus in on, but we're going to have to be great in our coverage units on special teams. All right. Key number two, offensive strategy. It's Jacksonville. you got to give the ball to Derrick Henry. Well, you have to run the ball, and you have to be able to run the ball, but then you also have to be able to hit some of these complimentary passes that work off the run action. Um, you have to be able to marry those in. We've been through this before. We've got to convert, move the sticks so that now these plays start to marry one another uh, and that we stay balanced. All right. And defensively, it's about coverage. Trevor Lawrence and his improved receiving core be great in zone coverage. Well, they have a lot of speed, and we've, you know, we're working through some injuries, and we would anticipate, like in any game, you're going to have to play some zone coverage. We can't let the ball be thrown over our head. We're going to have to get some depth, but then also be ready to to break and trigger uh, and react to those balls that are thrown underneath. And then we have to come vice tackle, and we got to hit them hard enough to knock the ball loose. Yeah, because they got a good tight end in Evan Ingram, who's an excellent receiver too, along with Kirk and Jones and all those guys. Yep, the Jones and Jones and you know Etienne they're going to throw to, and Hasty and Agnew will have his scheme play. So, you know, we're, we're all going to have to be able to get back, get set, and come tackle. More of the Mike Vrabel Show coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. This fall, the Tennessee Titans worked with high school students 
from the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Center at Williamson County Schools and professional artist Keenan Lopez on a My Cause, My Kicks initiative to raise awareness for 12 nonprofit organizations. The causes of the students choosing were split among six pairs of shoes. Representatives from the Titans organization met with the students weekly to work through various business objectives to bring their concepts to life. Design elements, mood boards, art direction, and a promotion plan were all part of the academic process. So awesome that people are going to have a chance to see that at the Titans Art Show. Sound like they got after they it. They got after it. I can't it wait because. to see the end result. Yep. Well, we'll see it Sunday. Looking forward to seeing you for Titans Jags this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. For Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says, good night, everybody.